Hello there and welcome to this Aquas tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Aquas to make objects float on the water surface. And uh, after that, I'm going to show you how you can create a volume that prevents water from rendering inside floating objects such as boats. So what I have uh, here, I have a fresh project. Uh, all I have created is this little uh, lake scene, really nothing special about it. And what I have imported in my project is Aquas and a simple wooden boat uh, that is freely available on the asset store. I think it's in fact part of the Unity standard assets. Um, so yeah, and to get started, we're gonna go to the simple wooden boat folder, to the prefabs folder and first drop the boat prefab into our scene. And uh, I'm gonna position it quickly. In fact, it's a bit too small for me. I have to rescale it. Well, that's a lot better. And um, now, now if I hit play, nothing, nothing happens. Okay. So uh, in order to make a float, um, we need to add the Aquas buoyancy component to it. Now, very importantly, um, the prefab can consists of a parent object that has child objects on it. Um, what's very important is that uh, the Aquas buoyancy component needs um, the object that it's on to have a mesh filter, a, a mesh filter component on it. Now, apparently the parent object doesn't have, it only has an animator, but the child object boat mesh does have um, a mesh filter component on it. So this is what we're going to use. <clears throat> I'm going to um, add uh, the, the buoyancy uh, component by clicking add component. Look for aquas, buoyancy, and there it is, and it automatically adds a rigid body component, which we also require, but there's still, uh, there's still a component missing that we need. Um, it's a mesh collider. So I'm gonna click add component, physics, mesh collider, and there it is. Let me just quickly move this up, and this will break the prefab instance, but that's okay. And um, now we have all the components we need. All we need to do is specify some of the values here. And I'm gonna start with the Aquas buoyancy script. First, we need to specify a water level. Uh, in my case, I know that the water level is 18. We need to specify water density. Um, you can really use any density you want because it, the density itself is, isn't all that important. What's more important is uh, the relation between the mass of the object and the water density. So I usually go with a water density of one. If you if you want to go for a higher one, that's perfectly okay. You just have to keep in mind that the mass will then also have to be higher. Um, the balance factor, you can leave this unchecked. This is kind of this is kind of a, of a leftover from an earlier version that um, attempted to apply the buoyancy feature to objects that didn't have a collider component on them. Um, but it's not really an elegant solution because it only makes use of, um, of numerical inaccuracies. So um, forget about this, leave this unchecked. And uh, the dynamic surface and the bounce frequency, those are actually um, two values that uh, simulate a dynamic surface um, because Aquas itself, it's only it's only a flat water surface, so there's no real dynamics. By um, um, setting a bounce frequency and the dynamic surface, which is basically a magnitude of the dynamics, um, you can simulate the dynamics to keep the boat um, like, like floating up and down a bit when it's in the water and not uh, come to a point where it's actually standing still. Um, so that's it for this component. The mesh collider, we can leave almost everything as is. One thing that's important though, the mesh collider has to be convex. Um, this is something that was introduced in Unity 5. Point, I don't know which version it was exactly. It was Unity 5. Point something that um, mesh colliders that were non-convex and non-kinematic didn't receive forces the way they were supposed to. So. If you leave this unchecked, uh, the buoyancy won't behave the way you expect it to. So always make sure that the mesh collider is convex. Um, for the rigid body, um, now I, I said earlier that uh, the water density alone doesn't matter all that much. It's always a relation between the mass and, and the water density. And um, when you have a low water density, you usually have kind of a low mass too. So I'm gonna try four. You, you're gonna ha have to try uh, which mask works the best for your object because 
it strongly depends on the density of your mesh, on the size of your object, on on the extents of your mesh. So um, you have to try until you find the value that's working best for you. I'm going to try four. I'm not sure if it works, but uh, we'll see. Um, I'm going to specify a drag force. I'm going to set it to one and an angular drag. I'm going to set it to two. This is just guessing. I just this is only to prevent the boat from from being con continuously in motion once it falls into the water because um, we we want it to actually stop rotating at some point. And that should be very much it. Now let's just quickly rotate um, the object just a tiny bit just so we can. Just so we can uh, uh, see see the the buoyancy uh, effect actually take place, and uh, this should be it. Now let's hit play and see how it works out. Okay, it seems to work pretty nicely. The boat is flowing on the surface now. If I move the parent object around, the boat uh, mesh as a child object is moving along and. It's starting to bounce up a little bit and uh, turn, and yeah, that, that's basically it to the buoyancy um, feature. What um, needs to be addressed now is the water that is rendering inside the boat. This is something we obviously don't want to have, and uh, Aquas does come with a shader that um, can prevent that. Uh, what we need, though, is we need a volume that fills this area, that fills the inside of the boat. And then we can drop that shader on it. I'm going to show you in a minute. And then inside that volume, Aquas will not be rendered. Okay, that's how it works. Now, you can either create that volume manually, but um, most 3D modeling programs have a feature that is called Convex Hull. Uh, whether it's Blender or Maya or 3D Studio, um, they should all have it. And in, in this example, I'm going to show you how to do it in uh, Blender. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to go over to Blender. And I have already done this before, but I'm going to delete this. And uh, what I'm first going to do, let me, let me just quickly stop uh, exit play mode and go over to Blender. I have an empty scene. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to import uh, the boat mesh. Uh, there it is. And um, now that we have the boat mesh, we are going to select it and get, tap into edit mode, select everything. And when we click Control V, we can select convex hull. That's uh, it's uh, convex hull is actually it's more math uh, rather than modeling. But uh, we don't have to deal with that now because Blender and probably Maya and 3D Studio can do all the math for us. All we have to do is click Convex Hull and it created a Convex Hull of our boat. Now, what is strange about this Convex Hull? Obviously, it uh, takes the rows into account too. So we don't want that. Now, if we use this volume, inside this volume, Aquas wouldn't render, but that would include the rows too and areas around the rows and it would look awkward. So in order to get a nice convex hull, I'm going to quickly undo that. Uh, that only affects the inside of the boat. We're going to have to delete parts of the mesh that um, we don't want to be included in the convex hull. So I'm just going to quickly tap into wireframe mode go to orthographic view and I'm just gonna select everything that I don't want to be included in the in the in the in the convex hull I'm also going to delete these little parts here that um, hold the rows that's it and I'm just going to delete the vertices and now if I go back to the solid view, I see that I only have the boat left now and I want to create a convex hull of this boat. So I'm all, again, I'm going to select all, hit control V, hit convex hull. And there is our convex hull. Now I can go back to perspective view, exit edit mode, and this is our hull. Uh, all we need to do now is export this hull as an FBX file. And I'm going to export it 
um, right to the assets folder and call it boat hull. And when I go back to Unity, it should be in our assets folder, and there it is. And all we need to do now is we're gonna we're gonna get this boat hull and we're gonna attach it to the object that has the mesh component on it. It's very important that you attach it to that, not to the parent object. Um, because if you attach it to the parent object, they might not line up perfectly. So it's very important that you attach it to the object that has the mesh component on it. And the rotation is slightly off. I think it's, no, it's not minus 90, it's 90. And now the convex hull perfectly envelopes uh, the boat. And of course, we don't want to keep it that way. Uh, we need to still drop the aqueous depth mask. Actually, it's called volume mask. Um, in, in this, in, in, in aqueous, it's called volume mask. And in order to apply the shader to the hull, what we need to do is first create a material. I'm going to go to the assets folder to the, to the project view and right click, create material. And I'm going to call it volume mask. And uh, now when I have this material selector, I'm going to go to the, to the shader in the, in, in the material settings and select aqueous volume mask. And now all I have to do is drop this material on the newly created, on the newly created hull, which is called boat mesh. And it's a child object and it, it's invisible now and we know that the volume the, the hull is there so the volume we want to mask out is there but it's invisible yet still aquas should not render inside it if i didn't go wrong somewhere but let's just hit play and see if it works yep and indeed it does now the boat is floating in the water just as it did before but aquas isn't rendering inside so Everything works just fine. Okay, um, that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you need any support or have questions or um, want to give feedback, you can send me an email or you can leave a message on the forum. I'll be happy to help. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and have fun. Bye-bye.